Have a threesome, we must. Look there. We have taken control of the And nigga, I was running. Uh. I want to go in my car so I can't get the charger from my watch, but I don't want to open the door. Right. Not yet. See you, man. Cinderella man, Cinderella man, Cinderella man. Without a cannon at a time machine. Cinderella man, Cinderella man. Uh, it's a logo. Of me. Basically, it's just um, Have a look here. It, it, it's just it's a brand logo for Nightwalker Lights. Should be okay now. There, there is a funny story on how it was created, and none of my fan base knows about it. No, rather than not. Uh, but basically. Uh, almost 3,000. Uh, I, I shit post on YouTube. Uh, depends on the video. Um, usually if I'm doing, like, a tutorial of an anti chi I coded, it takes, like, a good hour because I'm skimming through like the two hours of footage of me just fixing bugs in the anti-cheat that I found while trying to fucking do a showcase of it. Uh, yeah, so I made an anti-cheat for Minecraft.
No. Uh, basically, it's uh, I created it because um, I had the will to, and or the knowledge to, and no one else w w wanted to make one for Bedrock Edition. Uh, there are no anti cheats at all that I could find, or no good ones uh, for Bedrock Edition films. So I, I made one. Uh, that is not patchable, unfortunately, but it, it does it does do a number of things. Um, there's some like preventative measure mon uh, like modules in it, as well as like tools for staff to use inside of it as well. Uh, like if I like if I do the stats command on a player, it'll show me like their their current coordinates, what kind of armor they're wearing, and if it's enchanted or not. Uh, their spawn coordinates, how many times they've been warned by the anti cheat. How many times they've been warned by an operator, uh, if they are staff or not, if they're whitelisted for the anti-fly or not, uh, just a bunch of shit. It, it literally took uh, an hour to showcase the updated version of 2.2. I mean, that's a after cutting everything about. I'm so in queue, yeah. Nice. Um. I'll be honest with you, I modded a lot of Black Ops 2 um, and World, World at War and BO3. A lot of Call of Duty games I made modding menus for. Um, does the name... The, this name C isn't sharp. Uh, sound familiar to you? What? I'm sorry, what was your question? Uh... I mean, a lot of people have different reasons. Usually, if you're a cheater, it's just an addiction. It, it's a sickness. It's just, they like to cheat. Um, but for me, it wasn't simply about cheating. It's about, um, when I was 14, uh, I was playing Star Wars Battlefront on the PS2. And I found, like, this really weird glitch that allowed me to have a Droidica shield on a Jedi. So it was, it was, kind of, it was cool to me. Um, so I was running around with a Jedi, but with like a Droidica shield on, and I was basically unkillable. Uh, so it was that, like, thing that kind of sparked this interest in me to, like, play with the game more than I played the game. And eventually playing with the game is funner than actually playing with it, or playing the game. So, uh, Call of Duty, uh, they, they have this weird code uh learning gsc co uh, language is kind of useless because it's only ever used in call of duty games but i'm very fluent in it uh and where like you can make an entire game mode in call of duty just based on the loose like the non-existing anti-cheat they have uh so like um well, like w for one i didn't make this one but someone else did uh it's a game mode called zombie land I think it was in the Jiggy menu, and you activated Zombie Land, and basically like it turned like a uh, a regular game into like this this like uh, modded version of Infected from Long Warfare. So it was it was pretty cool. So like uh, people would ask, you know, if like they found a modder in their game, they wouldn't be mad at him. They would just ask him like repeatedly for Zombie Land or uh, to do some really weird shit, and usually they would do some really weird shit, like... Let me get in a, uh, I think all those things are full. Nah, I guess I'll spawn in a plane. But yeah, back then it wasn't really about cheating, it was just about playing with the game. <clears throat> and that was what it was all about. I used to enter into Minecraft, yeah. I used to play a look at the Anarchy Realms that allowed it. And that's actually what drove me to actually make the anti cheat for Minecraft, because I had a really good understanding on how the cheats worked as well. So, which is important if you're going to make an anti cheat, yeah. And it's not just like that, it's like, it's also like, you know, modding in Skyrim, I have a 
I have like hundreds of mods in my Skyrim games and in my Fallout game. So it's, it's not really about shading, it's just about playing with the game more than playing the game itself. Oh yeah. I uh, sort of. I I'm that guy that you call to see why your Xfinity internet is not working. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I am. Except I I don't really go out and like fix them. I just uh, I got hired by Comcast. Uh, to do outbound calls for sales uh, and then inbound calls for people that got called by a sales guy but like are calling back to see like what the fuck called them uh eventually because i was really good at you know de-escalation and uh door de-escalating a, a angry customer they were like hey you want to go ahead and uh do customer service because uh, we saw on your resume that uh, he actually went to college for IT, you know, and networking, uh, networking, uh, and I think I also did security. I'm not sure if I actually got it for security or not, but I, I did the bare minimum to put it on my resume and not be lying about it. Uh, so like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So and I got a promotion and a raise for like five more dollars an hour, which is not bad. Uh, you calculate that because I I haven't really been I've, I'm too lazy to check, but I my base was eleven an, an hour, um, and then it was an extra two an hour on top of that because I work vape night hours, uh, but for me I just get off at seven, um, but I, at their time I get off at nine, um, so it's an extra two dollars an hour for working night hours, and there's an extra two dollars an hour because. I, I am I also have weekends in my schedule. Uh, so I work the weekends. Uh, I live in Texas. And then there's an extra five an hour because I actually have the qualifications to do customer service and take calls. Uh, so I think I was along the lines of I went to college here here are the certifi like state certifications I have uh, for, you know, the IT. Uh, and, there's, and I was like, here's, you know, a portfolio of st stuff I made uh, for, like, video games. And I, I tried to boomer it down, you know? Like, okay, I created a modification to the game Minecraft. I created multiple modifications for this game. I created my own VPN at one point, and I also worked in sales at one point. What's that? Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. That is a weird one. It probably has a a preset VPN server that actually, or a dedicated VPN server that it's that's built for that router. I would turn that off. That means anyone can, yeah. That, that that's a. That means anyone can just run mass traffic to you, or through you, and it would also like lower your, your download speed by a lot. And I was like, I did a lot of sales stuff before. I uh, used to, uh, I used to do shit for Papa John's, so like it, this is kind of my field. And they're like, okay, we'll take it. Uh, Papa John's is a pizza joint.
fun to see. Uh, because I never actually learned to program. The only... The only language I'm fluent in and I can really, like, create something from scratch is GSC. But like I said, that's kind of a useless language because it's only used by the Call of Duty game. Uh, but, like, usually I can look at, like, C Sharp or JavaScript and just kind of, like, after a while, after playing with the code, I may not be able to read it, but I know what certain sections do. So, like, I don't really know, like, the ins and outs of, like, okay, this this is why, you know, it is coded the way it is. But I do know if I put this code here and there, then, the, you know, a if I do A, B, and C, then X happens. So that's kind of what I've been doing a lot with the... Uh, with most of the uh, personal Skyrim mods I made. Which is way more complicated than I thought it would be. But, you know, I can, I can go ahead and read the code, and I can use the code. But if I were to start something from scratch, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know where to start. I'm not fluent in the language. I just can read it and understand what it does. Uh, well, not, not really. I, I, I'm really careful with trying to choose some source codes because, like, usually they want like be credited and stuff like the mod menu i made for bo3 i knew the guy that made the base code so i was safe damn enemy there was basic there was literally just base code for a mod menu he created there was like the it base the base code that he created was just for a menu to pull up and you can shift through menus uh, the menu had no options in it whatsoever. It was just a menu, but nothing was in it. It was up to you to like, you know, create more options and more menus inside of it and make certain options actually do something, uh, which is what I did. And I ended up creating a mod menu called Icebreaker uh, for BO3. Which is, it's. I think it's one of the only free menus for BO3 that allows you to do a lot of shit to other players. You have to be host of the game, yeah. You have to actually be host for to use any GSC menu. Otherwise it just won't open. Uh I've never even heard of ProCon before what that is. Oh yeah, sort of. It's sort of like, um, like the tenic like the technical side of it. Think of it as an error message. It's the mod menu in most Call of Duty games, uh, especially if it's using a GSC menu. It's literally an error message. Uh, but instead of an OK button, it's decorated to look like a mod menu. But in all reality, it's literally just an error message. But you have never known that. Well, the, the the UI is the error message. It's basically an error message, but like you aim a knife and like this this menu comes up. And the way ice my icebreaker menu works is that you can, uh, I think, aim and shoot, and that goes up and down the menu. And then if you I think uh, if you hit the reload button, it like selects. Uh, like if so, if you hit God mode, a little message comes up on the top of the screen. Hey, God mode's enabled, and you can enable God mode for other players or all players. Yeah. No, it was, it was on your screen, so you would uh. Uh, you would sometimes it would like freeze the player movement, so that way it was easier, and you can maneuver the menu without actually moving, around. Uh. Which I didn't really like, but I knew other people did. So I ended up making an. I, met, I ended up coding it to where it did both. Uh, if you open the menu, it'll freeze you. But there's an option to uh, that literally just says move uh, while open. If you click that, it'll enable player movement while the menu is open. So that's why everyone liked it. Uh, 
uh, literally just because monument or the game is broken. It's it's easy as hell to just do anything for like. There's literally uh, mod tools on Steam that are specifically just uh, for uh, BF, BF or any or or any Call of Duty really. Oh no, no, not for not. I don't really mod in Battlefield games. I'm talking about Call of Duty. Yeah, there is no God mode for Battle Battlefield. Not that I know of. How did you just side shoot me like that? It's like 40. Uh, probably. I've I've wa I've wanted to like actually learn a language and be able to actually use it, you know, and freestyle with it, like I can with GSC. Uh, but I don't have the patience for something like C plus plus. GSC is basically just C plus plus, but C plus plus is a lot more complex than shoot. Alright. I'm um, 21. Nice. We got another nine years before we get called a boomer. I already get called a boomer by some fucking some of the Minecraft discords I'm in. Boopity boop. Oh, that's that's the AA. I wish I could stay in the plane as long as you have. Jesus. I usually get fucking Flieger Flaus from like three objectives over. But you, you know, you can recognize maneuvers and shit, so you probably actually know what you're doing. No, I heard you talking about maneuvers and shit earlier. I did. Right, you're talking like, oh, he used so and so maneuver. I'll have to remember that. Oh. Oh, okay. Damn, boy, you got some moves. Oh, so he had a better engine, so he literally flew a circle around you.
Okay, no way he's still up there. Wow, we are stomping them to the dirt. Holy shit, I didn't realize how much of a lead we had. I hated Battlefield 3. I, I stopped playing it for the sole purpose of I couldn't fly a plane or a helicopter anymore. Like, in Bad Company 2, I could fly donuts in a helicopter and then they changed the controls on me. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is flying right now? I didn't know how to. I was on a console, so there wasn't many controls options. Have a look here. Yeah, once I started actually playing on PC, I, I don't know how to use a controller anymore. I feel limited when it comes to movement. Now, this this PC ruined me. Once you go PC, you can't go back. I had the best KD on the team. I think. Yeah, I pretty much did. Uh...